television. We live with it. We watch it. It's always there. But how often do we really think about it? Someone who has thought about television a lot is Dr. George Gerbner, Dean Emeritus of the Annenberg School for Communication at the University of Pennsylvania. For over 40 years, George Gerbner has been working to understand how television affects us all. And his research has given us new ways to think about the complex and significant role that television and its stories play in our lives. The basic difference between human beings and, and other animals that, is that we live in a world erected by the stories we tell. Most of what we know or think we know we have never personally experienced but heard from stories and then tell the stories and there are basically three kinds of stories. Stories about how things are, stories about how things work, and stories about what to do about them. Now these three kinds of stories have been woven together into an invisible web called culture. I define culture as essentially stories and messages that govern our conception of life and our behavior. When the same images and patterns are shown on television over and over and over, viewers tend to mistake the fictional world of TV for the real world. This process is called cultivation because the values that television emphasizes are continually nourished and sustained many hours a day for most viewers. It's not something that happens to us at just one point in time. So there's no before and after because television is there from birth. Cultivation basically is the building and the maintenance of stable sets of images about life and society that are driven by the everyday flow of communication. In practical terms, this means uh, compare heavy viewers, people whose cultural life is essentially monopolized by television, who don't read much of the newspaper or don't read much of anything, with people who are light viewers because they have a much greater variety of cultural participation patterns. And when we do that, indeed we find significant differences. We find that the heavy viewers see things differently from the light viewers. When people ask about violence, they say, does it create more violence? The effect is supposed to be a change in increasing an imitation and, uh, and kind of a monkey see, monkey do effect. But this is really trivial. The contribution of television violence into the actual committing of violence is practically negligible. But if you look at it from a cultivation point of view, you see that images of violence are really uh, constitute a complicated scenario of victims and violent people. And that the image of victimization, the image of risk, the image of danger, the conception that if there is so much violence in the world, I'm, I'm at risk. Not that I'm going to go down the street to be a mugger, but on the contrary, I'm afraid to go down the street at night. I'm afraid uh, of strangers. Step oh, back. Oh. Give me a purse. Give them to me. All right, all right, calm down. Stay put. And uh, an average viewer sees about 350 characters a week, week in and week out. It's a very stable cast. Uh, we think that television changes all the time, but in fact, stars may change, styles may change, program titles may change, plots may change. But it's not plots that we learn. We forget the plots. We learn what we call casting and fate. For young women, uh, it has the effect of reducing of tending to reduce their sense of adequacy and their sense of opportunities, potentials, and the range of activities in which they, can, they are likely to be seen as, as appropriate and as adequate and as successful. Male socialization Im involves a very strong dose of aggression and uh, even of violence, uh, whereas female socialization involves a strong uh, dose of dependence and of potential victimization. Because blacks and whites on television are usually shown separately, heavy viewers tend to support segregation. They're more likely to think that blacks and whites should live in separate neighborhoods, and blacks and whites should not be allowed to get married. Second, because television exaggerates the extent to which blacks have made it in society, heavy viewers believe that racism is something that we once had but it's now over, and that we no longer need programs such as affirmative action that address racial inequality. The lower one-third of our population of lower income, lower education, 
are represented by 1.2% of the characters. The uh, absence, the disappearance of poor people makes it extremely difficult to connect with the very problems of our inner cities that are tearing this country apart. The new task then is to try to design a media system, a cultural environmental system, uh, which will address the issue of how can we create an environment for our children that is more fair, that is more equitable, and less damaging than the one we have today.